Hi, if you're a recently trained drone pilot or even an experienced veteran, you must have come across the question, what flight altitude should I fly at? Or if you're flying vertically, what distance should I maintain from the building? Is there an absolute answer to that question? We'll have a look in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Varun from Hammer Missions and in this particular video, we're going to try and talk through what is a good flight altitude or a good flight distance for your drone mapping and inspection flights. So, first of all, is there anything such as an absolutely best flight altitude or an absolutely best flight distance? Well, we all know that because of safety reasons, there probably are only certain altitudes that you can fly at. You don't want to fly too high because you're going to get in trouble with your aviation authority. And you don't want to fly too low because that also can be unsafe as you're too close to structures on the ground. There is definitely a middle ground, a healthy middle ground over here. But how do we actually go about figuring out the right flight altitude? Now, I did cover this topic in a previous video, but given that we we're in 2024, I wanted to give you an update. So I think that actually calculating the flight altitude once you've actually narrowed down your safety corridor is all about data quality and it's got nothing to do with the drone and everything to do with the data. Now what do I mean by that? Well it all depends on what your application is. Why are you collecting that drone data in the first place? And once you understand your application, understand the nuances of it, you're able to back calculate what is the right altitude for your flight or what is the right distance for your flight if you're flying vertically. So let's have a look at that. Broadly speaking, you could define most of your flights into a mapping flight or an inspection flight. Now, obviously, there is also search and rescue flights, but we're not going to go into those particular applications in this video. So, mapping or inspection. By mapping, I mean you're trying to create a map or a model of a particular site, and your end goal might be more measurement related. And what I mean by that is you might be looking at measuring the roof of a building or measuring a stockpile on a construction site, or you might be looking at measuring the height of a window on a facade. When you're looking at those sort of applications, what really matters to get your accuracy for your measurements right is something called GSD. And GSD is essentially the ground sampling distance. I have made a whole video on GSD previously, but essentially it's the amount of ground that's covered by every single pixel in your drone's camera. You can think of it like the resolution of your data, and a bit like when you have different resolution screens, you know, you might have a VGA resolution screen, which is really low resolution, and you might have an HD resolution screen. Same applies for your drone data. And the thing is that GSD, the resolution of the data, has a big impact on the overall accuracy of the measurements. Typically speaking, your measurements are going to be a multiple of your GSD. So if you're capturing the data at one centimeter per pixel GSD, your measurements are going to be accurate within two to three times the GSD of the data. So back to flight altitude. The thing is, flight altitude has a heavy impact on GSD. It's essentially a function of the height and a function of the camera you're flying with. So what you have to think about is you have a particular application, and in this case, it's mapping. And mapping actually leads to thinking about GSD and GSD leads to thinking about the right flight altitude. So what you want to do is you want to start with thinking about mapping as your end use case and work your way backwards towards the right flight altitude. So for instance, if you're flying a Mavic 3 Enterprise and you're flying at a 50 meter or 150 feet altitude, you're going to get somewhere between 1 and 1.3 centimeters per pixel GSD. The same applies to a different drone, for example, a Matrice 300 with a P1 camera you could probably afford to fly higher, something like 100 meters, and still get a really good GSD. So the camera matters, the drone matters, and what you're able to do with all of this information is to figure out what GSD do you need, and then figure out what is the right flight altitude for your particular mission. Now, I've talked about the mapping use cases. You've also got to think about the inspection use cases. Now, with inspection, you don't necessarily have to do measurements at the end. You might have a use case where you want to do the odd measurement, but the end, end goal is actually condition assessment, the actual analyzing of what is that particular site or structure looking like. And therefore, 
the accuracy of measurements doesn't apply so much. Does that mean we should completely ignore GST? Actually, not so much. So even with the inspection workflow, one of the things you have to think about is maybe you have to create a 3D model for your particular job. And that 3D model might also be dependent on capturing a good GSD because maybe you want the 3D model to look good. For example, if you're looking for cracks or defects, water ingress, or all sorts of issues that happen on buildings and structures, you might want to see that in the 3D model itself. And if your resolution of the data is not good enough, your model's not going to look crisp enough, it might be blobby, and it may not have all the details. Now, the other thing to think about is whatever you're looking for, that's going to show up as a certain size in the data set. So what I mean by that is if you're looking for a particular crack or if you're looking for a particular type of defect, whether it's water ponding, whether it's some form of anomaly, whether it's missing tiles in a roof, or maybe even if it's, even it's something solar related, uh, solar cells not looking right, all of that will look big or small based on the number of pixels that you're capturing in your data set or the resolution of the pixels you're capturing. So once again, even if your workflow is inspection, You've got to think about the GSD and then the GSD will tell you the right flight altitude. Now, there is one more factor you've got to consider in all of this. I start with talking about the safety aspect, then I moved on to talking about the data quality. Last but not the least, there is another aspect you have to consider and that's got to do with efficiency. So you might just be able to go for the best data quality flying at a really low altitude with the lowest possible GST and the highest possible quality. But is that even efficient? I mean, if you think about, if you're doing some solar park inspections, some of these solar parks are so huge, you'll never be able to capture all that data with, you know, even maybe five batteries. So you need to think about efficiency as well. And the lower you fly, to be able to get the same overlap, you'll have to fly a lot to be able to capture that much data so you also have to strike a good balance not only between the safety and the efficiency not only between the safety and the data quality but also with efficiency and it's sort of like this triangle that you're always trying to optimize so it's not super easy but if you've done enough drone jobs and if you've done enough drone missions you will find that actually this comes quite naturally to you and it's more of an art than a science and i think ultimately the experience of having done lots of drone missions will help you understand what what is the right flight altitude for your particular job. For example, if you're doing a thermal mapping, you might have to add another factor to the mix, which is thermal cameras have different profile compared to visual cameras. For example, the resolution on a thermal camera is generally not as high as a visual camera. What you might get at the end is actually you need to be close enough to get detail but far enough to have contrasting features so that your model or map looks really good. So thermal processing is yet another beast that requires its own form of thinking with respect to capturing the right flight altitude. Right, so I've covered some of the main ways to think about your flight altitude and the same process applies when you're actually not mapping horizontally, but mapping vertically, something like a facade, a refinery, or any form of an external surface that is vertical. And so in the vertical mapping, there are other things to bear in mind. But one of the things that actually works in your advantage is that with vertical mapping, you can afford to be quite close. And so you can get a really good GSD and really good data quality with your facade mapping or your vertical mapping side of things. The only important thing to think about over there is that your vertical data set should match your horizontal data set if you're trying to make an entire building envelope. So yet another factor to consider. Right, so I think I've gone through quite a few different aspects to consider, but overall, there are those three main things, the three main pillars you've always got to take into account. Safety, data quality, and efficiency. We will also be putting together all this information in an article and give you some more examples to go through and probably share some data sets. So if you're interested in checking that out, feel free to check out the description of this video. We hope that you liked this video. Thanks so much. For listening and if you think if anyone else might benefit who's not quite sure on what flight altitude to use do share that video with them as well we'll see you as always in the next video for knowledge hub